This one's old. <laughs> what? But I needed to know. What? what? Whoa. What the fuck? I needed yes, to know. Us. Okay. I'm glad this is no longer a thing. Let's start with that. Bodhi, tell us about how garden gnomes used to be real people. Yeah. Uh, the ceramic garden gnomes we see today have a very human and very solemn past. Not just notifying people about the, the home owners uh, being swingers, uh, but also <laughs> there's more to it. Uh, before the days of ceramic garden gnome, a human being often played the role of stern Robe wearing guardian of flora and fauna, and that person was preferably a grizzled old man who didn't mind living in seclusion and foregoing even basic personal hygiene. <clears throat> the ornamental wow. hermit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's great. I mean, if you if that's what you want to do and it's voluntary and whatever. I mean, we'll find out more. Uh two trends in Georgia, England created a moment in history for the phenomenon of ornamental hermitage. Solitude and overt displays of material wealth. Uh, do better with your money. Yeah. Uh, wealthy landowners desired expansive and often ornate gardens on their property and would use these expanses to reflect not just financial riches, but existing social mores, such as melancholy. Yeah, no shit. An old hermit standing in your yard is very sad. Yeah. Uh, elite circles viewed this deeper and more introspective form of sadness as a mark of intelligence and thus sought to associate themselves with the sentiment wherever possible. We got fucking emos back in fucking England. Jesus. Fucking <clears throat> super emos. Aristocrat emos. Arista emos. I'm sad today. Dress the hermit in blue. <laughs> Physical property presented an easy, obvious avenue to bring this social virtue of melancholy to life. Soon enough, wealthy landowners began placing want ads in newspapers to fill this very aim. And writers, ad writers often sought men who would agree to live in a garden for a span of time, usually about seven years, it seems, and devote themselves to a silent, forlorn, if not also wise and mysterious existence. One such ad placed by Charles Hamilton outlined the expectations for a hermit in residences as follows. You have an Englishman in your front yard constantly holding a sign and apologizing for being English? That's kind of the same thing, Ghost. Kind of flipping the tables on him, which I like. Uh, fucking English. Anyway, here's, here's, here's the description. Let's see. He shall be provided with a Bible, optical glasses, a mat for his feet, a hassock for his pillow, an hourglass for timepiece, water for his beverage, and food from the house. A.K.A. He, scraps. He must wear a camlet robe, and never, under any circumstances, must he cut his hair, beard, nails, or stray beyond the limits of Mr. Hamilton's grounds, or exchange one word with the servant. Wow, even lower than the servants. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, there's no quote here, so I don't know if that... No, just keep going. I think yeah, that's yeah, the no. end. The more eccentricities yeah. the hermit possessed, the better. While some consider modern-day hermits' preference for sequestration pathological, 18th century Europe lauded an individual's proclivity towards solitude and paid a pretty penny. I like that. Paid a pretty penny. That's that's. I like the little alliteration there. Good job, writer. That's well done. Uh, to those willing... Golf clap. Yeah, golf clap. Uh, to those willing to go nearly a decade without a bath or new clothing. I mean, I could do it. People wouldn't like it, but I could do it. Bro, I don't know if I could go seven years without a bath. After a while, you don't smell it. Yeah, but, you know, I sweat. I live in the South, and things get sticky. Well, these people are in England. It's cold and miserable and dark there, so. <laughs> Valid. This was a tall order. Or a short order. We're not going to height shame. Uh, and nope. some men who took on the position couldn't stand the life for more than a few months or years. These men must have been rather miserable as hermitage contracts often stated that if the hermit left before his tenure ended, he would also forego payment for his services. Ouch. Oh, fuck that. Ouch. Fuck that. If you, you owe me for every day I was there. We're talking about old England. I want to get paid. I should be getting paid on a bi-weekly basis. Yeah. <laughs> Or weekly, I you know I'm I like you know, I'd go weekly, and you know and when I quit, I expect my last check in the mail, or just hand it to me. Fuck, that's yeah. You know. 
All right, but here we go for those who stayed. For those who stayed, life was fairly straightforward. Most hermits lived in small shacks or caves built for them on the property and offered themselves to guests as a silent physical symbol of solitude and the nearness of death. Not interacting with guests was the hermit's key job function, at least most of the time. See, I can do that. Some accounts tell hermits performing tell of hermits performing duties such as light agricultural work or bartending garden parties. More often than not, though, the hermit's existence justified his paycheck, not unlike the way a nobleman of the era would have shown off his prized mare or his lovely wife. An ornamental garden hermit provided the leet another asset for others to praise. Introvert's dream job, yeah, until they fucking get abused or something. I don't know. Being trapped in this kind of perpetual melancholy would... That might get you after a while. Although, if you're gonna do it, I mean, do it right. Call call your gnome with like a little whistle or something or a flute. Yeah. yeah. Be, pops be out. whimsical. Be fucking whimsical about it, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those who couldn't afford to actually employ a hermit, they often set up a hermitage to imply that a hermit may soon arrive or had just departed. <laughs> <laughs> which offered the property owner a similar air of prestige. You just Fake can't it, see it. Make it. Fake it till you make it, baby. Wow. You know what? Oh, go ahead. I have an idea. I have a thought when you're done. All right. As cultural and technological changes sh shift, as cultural and technological changes shift, sh change shifts. Uh, bad writer. Bad. <laughs> bad. Led society away from maudlin and excessive and treated humans as ornaments. The garden hermit soon swapped skin in solemnity. For glass and kish, kitsch, and to become the ceramic garden gnome we know today. As with all obscure practices from days yore, if you dig around the internet for long enough, you can usually find someone eager to usher its revival. In the summer of 2014, an advertisement oh appeared on Craigslist. Gentle lady seeks ornamental hermit. <sighs> yeah, this is why you need to know your history, people. So, my thought was... The English started this, right? Uh, the English started all sorts of fucked up shit. Right, okay, and it morphed into garden gnomes, and since since some would put up fake shacks, I would imagine mythical gnomes in some way, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ring a bell here. Yeah. Given it was the English, you think that's how we got leprechauns? Oh, it was a racist depiction of Irish. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, ghost. I'm a racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, ghost. <laughs> Clipped and hey, shipped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while not feeding or speaking for several years may be unpalatable for many as far as job duties go, reminding all passerbys of our shared mortality certainly beats data entry. It's kind of the same thing. Yep. Clip with no context? <laughs> yeah. That'll go around the internet. Oh, <laughs> I'm a race. <laughs> While laughing. <laughs> Canceled. Oh, fucking Neil Young's going to come after me now. Hey, they say, they say, uh, <laughs> what, what, what is it? All press is good press. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that one, probably not so much, but that's great. <laughs> yeah. So this was actually an article from, uh, 2017. Can you believe that? Wow. On Twitter probably is true. Yeah. Yeah, wow, clip, okay. clip with no context on Twitter, everyone getting mad. Total truth. You can't even play <laughs> two truths and a lie. It's just three truths. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to play three truths? <laughs> no. 